It's a beautiful winter's day here in north central Indiana. We're at Stocksdale Mill. I'm Jim V. Brock and I've spent the last 30 years going around and photographing and videoing old mills. Let's take a look around this 1855 mill. Throughout most of the 1800s, these grist mills used the stones to grind the corn and the wheat. In the early 1900s, they advanced into the roller mills, which is two steel drums rolling together to crush the material to make the flour. This was a great technological advancement and it made these mills much more efficient. This particular mill ceased operations in about 1967. It was then purchased in about 2002 by the preservation company that has it today. Now this is private property, so if you come here, please be respectful of the owners and this historic mill. Okay, let's talk briefly about the millstones themselves. There would be two halves of these, and they have these marks cut in them, and this is where the grain falls in. The corn kernels or the wheat kernels will fall in there, and as the, as the mills turn against themselves in these grooves, that's what grinds the, the material down into a fine powder. They can put these down to where they're very, very close together and make a very fine powder. They're sometimes made out of granite, sometimes made out of limestone, um, sometimes they're just made out of whatever was close to it, but most of the time you need a very, very hard stone to grind these. Changing these out is a very dangerous process. A lot of people got hurt in, in doing that. Okay, let's talk about how the water gets into the mill itself. The mill operates off of the amount of water that can be provided. So if the amount of water available is not enough, then they would dam up the river or the creek to create what they call a mill pond, and that is done with a mill dam such as this. They also need a way to get the water directly into the mill or under the mill, and that is accomplished through what they call a race or a chase, sometimes called a sluice, and that is done by making a channel of water that goes directly to the mill. Underneath the mill, there's gonna be a room where the water collects and the turbine is in the bottom of that room. The deeper that body of water is above the turbine, the more horsepower the mill will have because of static water pressure. It uses the weight of the water to force down through the turbine. about how Stocksdale Mill was powered. This is a turbine which was more of a modern piece of equipment. When the mill was originally built around 1855, it used an overshot wheel, which would have had a longer chase and water would have cascaded over the top of the mill, filling up troughs along the face of the mill. The weight of that water then uses gravity to turn the mill, turning a horizontal shaft, giving the mill its power. Long about 1909, the owners of Stockdale Mill changed over to a turbine style of operation. This is something similar to what would be under the mill today. The room that there is, this sits in is filled with water, and the deeper the water, the more horsepower you'd be able to achieve using one of these because of the weight of the water. It's the weight of the water pushing through the turbine that turns the impeller inside. So this one has the flaps are closed. These open up and as they open up, water races in there, turning the turbine that's inside. Now, you may think that 1880s technology is outdated, but you'd be impressed to find out that your modern hydroelectric dams today use something very similar to this to generate power all across the United States. example of a mill dam. This is what's used to block up enough water or back up enough water for the mill to operate. 
We talked about the race or the chase on the other side that lets the water into the mill. And right down here, you can see where the water comes out of the bottom side of the turbine after the energy has been produced. Now, as I mentioned earlier, this mill at one time was a overshot wheel. And I think this is probably the foundation that the wheel was attached to here on the side. And again, they changed that out about 1909. It's very dangerous to swim around one of these. As you can tell today, the undertow on the bottom side of the dam is very dangerous. Easy to get caught in and not be able to get yourself out of it. I don't usually stop and talk about windmills on these videos, but I think they're really cool. They take the power of wind going around the fan at the top and it makes this arm go up and down. It's typically attached to the pump like this. You can see this one starting to work a little bit with the wind moving, which is cool. So it would make the pump operate and it would bring water to the surface in a consistent manner so that you didn't have to stand here and pump it. In the event that you just needed a drink or whatever, this is clean water. This is a hand dug well. It's probably 20, 25 feet deep. It's much cleaner than what you had going on over there in the river. And as you can tell, it's starting to work now. And these are really cool because you just simply pump them. And when they're operating, like this one is, it brings the water to the surface. These are really neat. If you get a chance to look at one of these up close, please do so. Thank you for exploring Scottsdale Mill with me. I'm Jim V. Brock. Let's go find another mill to explore.